Hi everyone and welcome to Newegg TV. My name is Paul and today I have a question for you. How many video cards do you have? The answer is one. Well, you might be able to be running more than that. The answer lies within today's video. This is our tutorial guide as well as benchmarking demonstration of multi-GPU configurations, also known as Crossfire X if you're running an AMD video card or SLI if you're running an NVIDIA video card. So, what is Crossfire X? Crossfire X for AMD video cards and the NVIDIA equivalent SLI is a system that allows two or more GPUs or graphics processing units to work together to render the same video stream. Ideally, the goal is to double, triple, or quadruple graphics rendering performance depending on how many GPUs you are using. Once it's set up, it should be a seamless process that would be no different than using a single graphics card. Although both AMD's Crossfire X as well as NVIDIA's SLI provide the same end result, there are some differences and today's demos will be primarily focusing on the AMD solution. Since graphics cards these days can have multiple GPUs in the same card, let's clarify the naming conventions. A single graphics card with a single GPU is, well, just a graphics card. Two of these uh, together would be called two-way SLI. Three of them would give you three-way and four of them would give you four-way. Using a graphics card with two GPUs, like the PowerColor Radeon HD 7990, gives you two-way Crossfire X on the same card and is sometimes called dual Crossfire X. Two dual GPU cards together is called quad Crossfire X or quad SLI. So we've covered what Crossfire X is and why you might want it. Let's now talk about who might be interested. There are actually fewer people running multi-GPU configurations than you might expect, given how much coverage they receive on review sites as well as YouTube channels like ours. To explain this, I will start out with some Crossfire X cons or reasons you might not need to jump up to two or more GPUs. The first con is compatibility, and this has to do with the drivers you're using as well as tuning for specific video games that you might play, because games do need to be tuned in order to take advantage of multiple GPUs. For this reason, I usually recommend a fast single GPU card over two slower cards, um, even if the two slower cards by themselves might produce marginally better performance, a single card will give you better compatibility overall and simply a, a better and easier user experience. The next con is heat, and uh, this is for a couple different reasons. First off, you're adding additional components that are all going to generate their own heat. Also due to the close proximity of cards in the system right next to each other and the limited amount of airflow that you get, the cards are going to get hotter. Uh, this leads into the third con, which is noise, and noise, um, by virtue of the fact that cards need to keep themselves cool, uh, the fans will spin, and as the GPUs get hotter, the fans are going to spin up higher. More GPUs, more heat, more fan RPMs, more noise. That's pretty much the nature of the beast. Uh, this is also why multi-card solutions are usually very popular for enthusiasts and uh, custom water cooling loops because the water cooling uh, blocks that you put on there are much thinner so it provides additional airflow between the cards and also water cooling is a more efficient cooling method uh, so it's going to keep the cards cooler and kind of negate some of that uh, heat, residual heat buildup. Uh, the third, uh, the fourth con I should say is power consumption. And again, uh, this kind of goes without saying, but adding more GPUs, each one is going to have a certain amount of power that it draws. This is going to require a beefier power supply. It's also going to increase your power bill because uh, if you're running multiple GPUs, especially if it's on a long-term basis, well, you're going to be using a lot of electricity pretty much. Of course, there are also pros to counter these cons, so uh, here are a few reasons why you might want to try out SLI or Crossfire X. Uh, the first one, obviously, is the performance boost, so just to give a sort of really generic example here. If your video card gets 100 frames per second in your favorite video game and you add two of them, well you should get 200 frames per second. If you go for a third, you should get 300 frames per second and 400 frames per second if you go for four. Now this is called scaling, as in the percentage of increase you get by adding additional GPUs, but that's an ideal circumstance. You're not Actually, you're pretty much never going to get exactly 100, 200, 300, 400 scaling like that um, simply because drivers aren't tuned, the games aren't tuned exactly to that uh, level. And there's other variables that go in there that say that you're not going to get that exact number. But you will get increased performance almost invariably. Uh, and then the second uh, big pro for uh, multi multiple video cards is going to be high resolution gaming. Uh, High-res gaming, so if you're going for a monitor that's 2560 by 1600, for example, 2560 by 1440, higher resolutions than that, multi-monitor games, so three 1080 monitors, it gives you 5760 by 1080 resolution. Uh, you simply need more graphics horsepower in order to push all of those pixels, so if you're going for high-res gaming, definitely uh, multi-GPUs multi SLI or Crossfire X is a great solution for that. 
Of course, you might also be interested if you're simply a bleeding edge hardware enthusiast. You want the best of the best, fastest of the fastest. It's hard to beat more than one GPU with a single GPU. Uh, also, if you're going to be doing a lot of benchmarking or alternative uses, for instance, Bitcoin mining is popular with some people, uh, that's another option. Uh, I guess another reason is that it just looks really cool, looks badass, uh, especially if you have a water cooling system. Um, having a stack of high-end GPUs in there, well, it's kind of a, some street cred for you. And lastly, if you just have money falling out of your butt, well, what better way to spend it than on lots of GPUs? So if you have decided to take the plunge and my cons have not deterred you, let's move on to the tutorial portion of this video, which is how do I set up Crossfire X. Fortunately, setting up Crossfire X or SLI is not too tough to handle, but you will want to plan ahead. We're going to be uh, going over picking out your compatible hardware, installing that hardware, and then configuring your software. So first off, some hardware compatibility points to keep in mind. First off, your video card. Uh, for your video card, you're going to want to make sure that you're going with models that are, well, compatible with Crossfire X or SLI. I recommend using video cards that are the exact same model, or at least ones that have the same GPU and the same memory. That is a requirement for SLI. There's a bit more flexibility with Crossfire X uh, that only requires that your GPUs be part of the same family and series. Uh, for instance, a Radeon HD 7950 and 7970 are in the same 7900 series, so they can be used together. I've posted links in this video's description. Those are to the compatibility charts for AMD and NVIDIA cards, uh, so you can check those out. But if you're in doubt, just get two of the exact same card. Also, bear in mind that some video cards can only do two-way Crossfire X or SLI, while others can do three-way or four-way, and most low-end cards can't do either of them. Usually, a single Crossfire X or SLI finger on the end of a card means that you can do two-way, and dual fingers means that you can do three-way or four-way. Also, double check the manufacturer specs to be sure. Apart from the video card, you'll want to pay special attention to your power supply, your case, your motherboard, and your CPU. So first off, we'll talk about the power supply. Multi-GPU configurations are power hungry, and you will need a beefy power supply to provide all of the necessary juice. My three-way configuration drew over 1,000 watts from the wall under full load, just to give you guys an idea, so definitely look for a well-reviewed power supply. I usually go to the sites that do legitimate power supply testing, like Silent PC Review, PC Perspective, Anantec, Hardware Secrets, Hard OCP, Tech Power Up, or Johnny Guru. Most video cards will list a manufacturer's recommendation for wattage, which is, in, which is the recommendation for your whole computer system, including the video card. You'll also see a card's TDP listed, that's thermal design power, and that's the power draw just for the video card itself. Uh, for instance, HIS recommends a 500 watt power supply minimum for this Radeon HD 7970 GHz edition. 7970 gigahertz edition by itself has a 250 watt TDP, so for my three-way configuration, that equals 1000 watts. 500 for the system plus one card, 250 for each additional 7970, and I usually round up by 100 to 200 watts more to make sure I have some headroom for overclocking or using a more power-hungry test bed. Uh, so for today's test, I was actually running a 1,350 watt PSU. And of course, always double check the manufacturer's recommendation to make sure you're within their guidelines. Next up, let's talk about the case, and I mentioned your case for two key reasons, space and airflow. You'll need enough room in your case for your video cards, and of course you will need to make sure it's compatible with the size of your chosen motherboard, particularly if it's larger than standard ATX. Airflow is an absolute requirement for multiple GPUs, and uh, you'll need to evacuate the hot air created by the GPUs ASAP. Uh, look for cases that are lauded for their airflow, I have multiple fan mounts for intake and exhaust, and in particular cases that can provide direct fresh air over the video cards, such as the fan mounting points on this case's side panel. Finally, on the hardware side, let's talk about the motherboard and the CPU. Uh, fortunately for us, most motherboards in the mid to high end range right now support both Crossfire X and SLI these days, and that gives us a lot of options to choose from, but don't take my word for it. Make sure to check the compatibility and features charts for your motherboard to make sure that you have the option for at least two-way SLI and Crossfire X, and of course, compatibility with your chosen CPU. If you need three-way or four-way, look for that too. Uh, and make sure that the spacing of the full-length PCI Express X16 slots is such that you can fit your cards as well as any other components that you might want to add in the future. 
Uh, double slot spacing is usually required since most cards take up two slots each. Triple slot spacing can allow for larger three slot cards, like this one, as well as additional space for airflow between each card. Speaking of PCI Express, your CPU choice can have an impact on your video card's performance. In newer CPUs, the PCI Express controller is integrated into the processor, so if you want the latest PCI Express version, that's Gen 3 as of the filming of this video, you'll need a CPU that supports it. Intel CPUs, for example, have socket 1155 motherboards right now that support both their second generation Sandy Bridge as well as third generation Ivy Bridge CPUs, and you need an Ivy Bridge if you want to rock PCI Express Gen 3. If you're going for three or more video cards as well, check out how many PCI Express lanes the CPU provides. If the 16 native PCI Express Gen 3 lanes available in the Ivy Bridge processor aren't enough for your configuration, go for a board like our Gigabyte Z77X UP7, which uses a PLX multiplexing chip to add PCI Express lanes for four-way Crossfire X and SLI support. So now that you have your hardware all picked out, I'm going to walk you through a quick setup for Crossfire X, and keep in mind that SLI configuration is pretty much the same. First, get your computer up and running with just a single video card. Get Windows installed and updated along with all of your necessary drivers, and feel free to check out our new TV How to Build a Computer video series for help in this area. I recommend running a game or three or just some benchmarking software just to verify that everything is stable without the Crossfire X or SLI. Next up, power down your system and turn off the power supply. Wait for any leftover power stored in the capacitors to escape. Usually once the lights go out on the board, you're good to go. Uh, I'm using an open test bed here, but you should remove the PCI brackets where your additional video card will be installed. Drop the card into the PCI Express slot until it snaps into place. Secure it with screws and plug in your PCI Express power cables. Finally, install your Crossfire bridge across the first and second card's leftmost Crossfire fingers and you're all set. Power your system back on and you'll often find that the Catalyst Control Center prompts you upon boot up to confirm your new Crossfire X settings. If not, go ahead and open the, the, open the Catalyst Control Center, navigate to the gaming menu and you'll find the option to enable or disable Crossfire X. If you're not sure if it worked or if you just want to double check, download GPU-Z and you should see your Crossfire X setting listed towards the bottom. And that's pretty much all there is to it. Now you should see a performance boost in your games, uh, but depending on a lot of variables, it might not be a 100% increase. Now every game is optimized for multiple GPUs, but many of them are to some extent. To give you guys a better idea, here are some benchmarks comparing the performance of the HIS Radeon HD 7970 GHz edition in single, two-way, and three-way Crossfire X configurations. And here's a closer look at said three-way Crossfire X configuration. As you can see, I got my HIS 7970s all installed right there. Top one here is actually 7970X, which is their kind of custom design one, but they're all running at the same frequency, that being uh, the uh, 10, 1050 megahertz uh, frequency that the uh, 7970 gigahertz edition GP runs at. Got my Crossfire X bridges set up. Uh, the first one is on the first couple fingers of the first two cards. Second one is on the second fingers of the second and third cards. If I were to add a fourth card, I would add a uh, third Crossfire uh, bridge uh, back on the first fingers of the third and fourth card. That said, uh, you're going to see that some games scale really well with this configuration. Other games, you're only going to see about a uh, 5 to 10 percent boost, and uh, here are the benchmarks.
So those are our benchmarks, and hopefully that gives you guys a much better idea of the type of performance benefits you can get from running a two-way or three-way Crossfire X configuration, to say nothing of four-way, because I didn't test that. Uh, but at the same time, of course, we have our cons creeping in, uh, that being that our power draw was up over 1,000 watts uh, under full load, so it actually hit up to 1,010, according to my measurements. Also, of course, you have the heat generation, uh, comparing a single card, uh, which was typically running in the mid to upper 60s under load, uh, the three-way configuration, the topmost card was actually creeping up to mid to upper 80s, which is a good 20 to 25 degrees Celsius increase in heat. But if you can handle those, uh, it's a great way to get some more performance out of it. And hopefully you guys have a much better idea now of how to set up and configure a Crossfire X or a SLI configuration. That's going to wrap it up for this video. I'm Paul with Newegg TV. If you enjoyed, you can find more on our Newegg YouTube channel. Don't forget to subscribe for more tech videos and tutorials. Thanks a lot for watching everyone and we'll see you next time.